three feet in snow. Here? Here? Yeah, that, that much snow here? Dude, yeah, like the pond froze over. That's, that's insane. Look at that. They just... Now these guys look like little piranhas. Oh my god, he just inflated a little bit. He's so excited. <laughs> Come on, pony. You named him pony? Oh, I just got it on I got him. What is going on, everybody? We're here in Chicago. Welcome to Chicago, Blake. Yes. I know this is not the weather that you and are I'm cold. used to. I'm yeah. cold. Let Florida tan <laughs> is gonna be gone by the end of this video. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're we're in the Midwest, and it's it's rainy here. Sometimes it gets cold. We actually just got out of our out of the winter where the, we were up to three feet in snow. Here? Here? Yeah, that, that much snow here. Dude, yeah, like the pond froze over. That's that's insane. My pond freezes over in the winter. Yeah, that's so, crazy. So this is a pond that Greg actually built too. So this is my aquascape ecosystem beautiful the rocks are so much different compared to my house yeah so greg built this for me last summer so i've had it for about a year now and um dude it's honestly it's dope it's gorgeous it's crazy because you don't realize how much you enjoy a pond until you have one yeah, like we always, I agree. My, my family always thought growing up like we wanted a pool or something back here a but pond's more it's more relaxing dude a pond is yeah. so much nicer it's definitely cool so, and i freaked out i just saw this and i was like what the heck is that that's it's a basement. We don't have basements at home. <laughs> yeah, you guys just have ranches. Yeah, we just have exotic ranches. animal ranches. Yeah, literally. All right, this is my it's mom. It's awesome. Mo my Hello. Mom's actually, Hello. My mom's the one fairly responsible for making it look as pretty as it does. Oh yeah. So I planted so many things. Mom, <laughs> you want to tell Blake um, maybe some of the things you're doing with the? Well, I planted all of this stuff. I have a couple more things that I'm still waiting to plant, but I have a bunch of perennials that yeah. I planted, um, so that. Once everything comes up, it's going to be really beautiful. That's awesome. Um, and they do good in the winter and stuff too. Yeah, a lot. I mean, they die during the winter. Yeah. And then everything is going to come up. Just so comes back. The grasses are going to be. That's really And the grass high. comes back green even from the snow. Oh yeah. I mean, and they'll be huge. Oh wow. So it's it kind of makes a nice. That's some fence. bright green grass. Yeah. I don't got grass like that with that many animals. The story is that I actually didn't tell my parents that we were getting this pond. Oh, for real? Yeah, so the morning of, that's when she found out, and then my dad didn't even realize until the end of the day. Yeah. And it was already built. Yeah. And but so, it was definitely a nice addition. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Freaking cool, really cool. It. I want my koi. So we went to, for this pond, we went to Japan with Greg, and we picked out a whole box of koi. Yeah. And so they've landed in the United States, they're over in New Jersey, and I just haven't gotten really the chance to pick them up yet because yeah. I'm still, just trying to get all my videos out from my Southeast Asia trip, but, but there are some little, dope videos. There are little babies. I mean, we handpicked them out, yeah. yeah. And I'm waiting impatiently. So yeah, originally, for them to get in. originally I was telling Blake we put piranhas in this pond, and um, that lasted for the whole obviously in summer. Yeah, that lasted the whole <laughs> summer. But once it got cold here, we took them in, and that's the tank we're about to show you now. Is the piranha tank? Let's go see this piranha tank. That's why I was, I was excited about to come here and see was the piranhas. This is my younger brother Yanni. What's going so, on? Handshake, whatever, yeah, friendly, small, whatever you want yeah. to do. <laughs> he's, he's a grade A clown, um, but he's been a lot of my videos, and he is. I couldn't ask for a better sidekick. So Heck yeah, that's my, also my dad, and um, yeah, yeah, we like the party. Yeah, we like, like the party. Get after it. <laughs> uh, Here you like go. The party. <laughs> we get after it. Yeah. And he's, we're missing one. One is. One, one more. Theodore, yeah, my older brother. He goes okay. to school in Denmark. And then Joe. And little Joe. <laughs> We're not related to him. Yeah, I know. We're not related to him. That's funny. So was. this is the tank. Yeah, so this is the piranha tank. Uh, this is, uh, I think 150 gallons. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's sweet. And, and so, you designed all of it and everything? Yeah, yeah, we aquascaped the whole thing. It's so quiet, too. It's super quiet. So the There's filtration no is all underneath in here. It's that just awesome. um, a canister filter. Yeah. And as you can see, it's like this entire stand is like nearly empty. Yeah, like definitely. the whole filter is just, just right there. Thing. That is cool. But dude, you said that piranhas are really skittish, and that's something I did not really expect at all. My first viral video was don't buy fish off the dark web. And the fish that I got off the dark web ended up being piranhas. Now, <laughs> originally we opened the box, we saw the piranhas, and we didn't know what to think because the movies, the media, they make piranhas out to be these like bloodthirsty, yeah. yeah, vicious like fish. So that's what everyone knows them as. 
but really in real life they're very timid and very shy and they get spooked so so easily as you can see they don't even want to be around us right now yeah so like they'll come out eventually cool but um they and are and what do you feed them here okay oh yeah see they're all hiding here they're Super. not used to maybe they just you want to maybe turn off the light yeah they're just all spookish i'll turn there. off the light and see if oh there they out. go there's some right there Jeez. look at that red belly piranhas yeah, so these are red belly piranhas. That is cool. Originally, I had like two of them, but... How big did you get them at? They were probably half that size. Huh. Yeah, so they grew a little bit in the pond, and then they have grown a little bit more since... And what's like their main diet that you just go for? So I, I try to give them as much meaty food as possible, and we'll feed them here in a second. They go, they go pretty... Yeah. They go crazy. Um, and actually, when, when we were moving the piranhas from my pond to this tank, it was another video I did. It was like dangerous piranha transfer. Uh, my cousin got bit. And yeah. It drew like, oh my gosh, like. Oh, when I was in the Amazon, the little kids we were catching them up, and they were every time we pulled them up, they would jump and run and like laughing and everything because like the teeth are so big. No, yeah, they're massive. If, if if these guys get a bite of your finger, I mean, they could. It's a nice chunk. Yeah, it's a, they'll take a nice chunk off your finger for sure. Really so. Guys. And they don't really fight each other or anything at all. No, they don't really fight each other, and it's interesting because sometimes they'll have these little, like, marks on them. They almost yeah. look like scabs, and I think that's because, like, they're so crazy that sometimes when they're eating, they'll literally just, like, run into each other. But Their jaws are so big. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed when you were in the Amazon, but usually when you pull them out of the Amazon in the wild, yeah. they have, um... They have those marks on them. But yeah, they're all scratched up. They're all scratched up, exactly, yeah, so it's, it's pretty common. Um, for piranhas to kind of get like pretty cool. And how many did you say you have in here? We have eight, a pack of eight piranhas. So they are, um, I don't know if it's considered a schooling fish, but they do like to be in packs. They feel yeah. a lot more comfortable. Um, and that's why kind of the movies have that narrative that if there's blood in the water and there's a pack of piranhas, if they're hungry enough, I mean, yeah. they will do some damage. They're not like trying to eat humans. Do you ever try to put a thing of blood of water in there? No. But that's See if they go crazy? Yeah, will piranhas. I, Jeremy Wade did something like that, similar yeah. on River Monsters, yeah, definitely and that. they pretty much left him alone. And that's because he was like sitting in a big clear yeah. pool of water. I mean, I was like inside the water in the river when I was with the piranhas catching them. Yeah. But I, I think mean, it's just in your head that you're scared of them, really. Yeah, exactly. They're, I mean, piranhas are opportunists, yeah. for sure. I mean, there's some that are carnivorous, but there's also piranhas that are like just solely you know, fruits and plants. And have, and yeah, I've seen like that. that. I, even like Pacquiao, the piranha family, I think as well. Exactly. Have you ever put live fish in here? Um, like I, goldfish or minnows or anything like that? I don't do it very often, but I'll do it like, um, sometimes if- They uh, just go crazy probably? Yeah, they go they go a little crazy. But I've been training them to eat all sorts of food. So Let's do we're it. Gonna feed all, we're gonna all feed all my fish today. Okay. And so I'll show you guys what we feed them. So once a day for most of the animals is enough. But sometimes some of the things I have do need to be fed twice a day. And so usually my cousin Big George feeds them all at night and then I'll feed them sometimes in the morning. But we have a bunch of frozen food here. Frozen food is really the best for fish because it keeps the nutritional value, like it holds it when it's frozen. So this is um, frozen mice shrimp. And so we're just gonna take a few cubes of this and throw it in here. We're just gonna make like a, a bit of a soup. So this is gonna be the food for all of the different cool. fish today. All right, so everything, literally everything will eat the frozen mysis. Yeah. Then we have some half-shelled clams, and these are for the puffer fish because their beaks need to, like something hard to get their, to trim their teeth. Yeah. So, and they love these things. Okay. So we'll throw a couple clams in there. And they'll actually take them nice and cold because it's good for them. Like the harder those shells are, the better it is for their teeth. Yeah, bloodworms. So these are for the um, discus fish. The discus fish. Oh yeah, they discus love, too. Yeah, That's they awesome. love um, bloodworms. So the fish get fed almost every day. Yeah, they get fed every day. We're gonna let this defrost. Let's go, Let's go feed everything. All right, moment of truth. Usually they're literally like waiting. It. Yeah, like. So I'll just back up a little bit. And you just they'll have like, thing. they'll be like a pack of them. And then as soon as you come to the tank, see they're used to getting fed at night. And okay. all the stuff is, but, and they'll just like swarm up to the top. So you're gonna see when we just put the food up to them, like up above the water, how they're ready for it. And then you can go ahead, drop it in there.
Look at that. They just crushed it. Literally all gone within a second. But they're freaking dope. So no, we're moving no on. Oh, we're going down to the basement. Down in the basement. So underground stuff. Yup. This is. So this is like the 12G. This is where I do everything. This is where we do everything. Yeah. This is the this is the spot. Up, this is the basement where I have the rest of my tanks. In total, I have about 13 tanks um, and the pond. Then, as you saw, so this is kind of my main tank. So this is what I grew up doing when I was a little kid. I got hooked into aquariums because of nano reefs reef aquariums um so coral uh, invertebrates fish yeah. everything salt water and that's it dope. was really challenging for me to keep some of these corals alive at first and so that's why it like sort of became a very addicting hobby i was like why aren't these corals living like why aren't they growing but it took me a couple years to really like figure it out um and then i just did saltwater crimes for the first 10 years now i have freshwater brackish i've got the pond i do yeah, everything brackish too. yeah that's cool this so this tank is actually brackish that's so this is my puffer fish tank and we got three um, green spotted puffers in here. This is Kirby, Furby, and Herbie. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. So they're the three amigos. They are hilarious. Like they're like, I love them. I'm going to say I love everything. Yeah, of course. But they're so cute. Like I love them. So they will just. And they go for those clams that we were pulling yeah, out earlier. Yeah, so you're about to see them attack these clams. And this is brackish, so it's like a little bit of salt. Yeah. So these puffer fish grow up in. Uh, like freshwater, and then eventually, like they make their way down stream into like even fully, like they can be fully saltwater fish by the time they grow up. So when these in like three, four years, when these guys are like max size, which is honestly they'll get as big as my fist, huh. they'll be they could go in a saltwater tank like like that. Yeah. A okay. All right. So this is the clam, and they see us. That's a really cool thing oh, about yeah. puffers is like they have a lot of personality and they can see. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll just hold it here. They're like, now these guys look like little piranhas. Oh my God. He just inflated a little bit. He's so excited. <laughs> yeah, these, but so these guys are vicious. I mean, they'll, they look cute, but yeah. they will shred like anything. Like if I put like a little freshwater fish, like a nano freshwater fish in yeah. there, like they would, they would go after it and they would just huh. crush it. I mean, that is dope. So they got pretty sharp teeth. So if you put your finger in there and they Take they'll, a bite. They'll bite you. Yeah. It's like a little love bite. Yeah, I don't want to get bit. But here, yeah, we'll throw that in there for him. Oh, you see, they just, down. yeah, they just nosedive. Like, they love that thing. That's pretty dope. This is my seahorse tank. So, this is, well, we'll start with, this is my starfish. And mm -hmm. normally, starfish don't do particularly well in aquariums. So, you, you know SpongeBob, right? Yeah. How Patrick is, like, dumb. Yeah. So, that's because in real life, starfish don't have brains. Interesting. Yeah, so that's, it's actually funny because a lot of the things that you see, a lot of like the cartoon characters and anime stuff like Finding Nemo where like th their personalities are actually reflected on real traits in the fish. It's so, like clownfish. So these are my clownfish. These guys. Yeah, and you know in the movie like Finding Nemo yeah. how Dory and Nemo like don't get along? Yeah. It's because if you put a clownfish with a blue tang, a Dory fish in real life, like they'll fight. Interesting. Yeah, so there's a lot of like cool things that films like that will do to actually incorporate real like yeah. traits of the fish, which I really huh. like. Um, so, okay, so these guys really like the frozen, the seahorse really likes the frozen mices. So where is he? Of course, he's not out either. I'm gonna see if I can get him to come out. Come on, Pudgy. You see him down there? Yeah, so seahorses, it sucks for the, um, for the camera, but seahorses like are actually camouflage artists. So that's that black thing that's down there. So here he comes, here he comes. Oh, there he is. Do you see him? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna try to get him to come out for the camera. Come, come on, pony. You named the pony? Oh, I just got it on, I got him. Yep. Yeah. So he'll use his, he'll literally like, it's pretty cool the way they eat. So he'll suck it in, and then you saw that little. Yeah, that little thump. Yeah, yeah, like it shot out through like the back of his head. Yeah. So cool. they digest in a couple different ways. They first, boom. So they filter it out through the back of their head like yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that. And then they also poop. So they're actually pretty dirty animals. Yeah. And they're, which is ironic because they need like, really really clean water so i give this i change the water on this tank like every week wow 
So it's got to be, and that's what all this macroalgae is, all this like red algae. Yeah. That, and even the green one, that's a, that's real, um, that's that's alive. That's real hmm. algae um, called macroalgae, which takes in uh, bad nutrients. And it's like a natural, it's like natural filtration basically. Interesting. So it's like the way trees will take, you know, O2 and, or um, carbon dioxide yeah. and produce oxygen. Those things basically are in a similar way taking in bad nutrients and kind of cleaning the water. You can just have it. You're just being a little stubborn, a little bony. That's funny. So that stuff will just like, it'll sit around and then you'll, and you'll find it. Yeah, it'll find it. This is a snail. So on my channel, I have a running joke with these snails. It's called, Nassar they're called Nassarius snails. Yeah. And so when I hit a hundred thousand subscribers, okay. I, uh, I actually got in a tub with a a thousand of those snails. Oh wow. Yeah. Where'd you do that at? In my college dorm room. So is this a pair? So that's a pair, yeah. So and Is that's... the male the smaller one? No, so yes, the male is the smaller okay. one. The female is the bigger one. That's dope. Yeah, it's 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 pretty interesting. Hi puppies. There they go. So and then this tank was custom designed and designed and made for me and my channel and it came with this is basically an apex board, so that's um dope. These tanks just like, they, there's a lot going on and you know, you gotta be, you gotta be on top of like all sorts of different elements, obviously nitrates, uh, nitrite, but like phosphates. And then you got calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, things that like the corals need to thrive. Um, those things, you gotta make sure the levels are, are good. And, and you got a big old shrimp in here? Yeah, actually. And then I see he just shed it, He huh? just shed, yeah, it's so cool. So um, he'll do this like once every couple weeks and that's just good timing. Yeah. This is a whole skin of it. This is the skeleton. That's crazy. Yeah. And so actually what I'll do with this is usually I'll feed it. So these guys are already fed, but I'll usually feed it to these guys. And they'll eat it? And they'll eat it. Yeah, here. Hopefully. Let's see if they're still hungry. Will you take it? Or are you full? They literally got a whole look at look at their bellies. You see how they're oh like. Oh my god, full? yeah, they got a full belly. But he still wants some more. Come on. Normally they would crush this. Go for it. That's funny. With Smurfette, one I, multiple times I found her like roaming the basement. So like one time I was I was in the bathroom over here and uh, are you serious? Yeah, no, like no joke. Like one time I was like cleaning some like filter sponges in the bathroom over here and I literally just look over and I see Smurfette just walking right here across the door. That's and crazy. I'm just what are you doing? Like get back in your tank and like I lit. So that's why you <laughs> put the lid yeah over that tank. Uh, that is she, crazy. They're very sneaky little guys, and when you're not looking, they'll just get out. They'll get out. That's wild. There. there he is. So this is my flower horn Thanos. He's dope. He's so cool. Flower they, horns are such interesting fish. They are. And he, the reason he's in here alone is because they're super aggressive. Yeah. So if you put anything else in there, he will just, destroy just it. yeah, he'll destroy it. You got to keep their water pretty warm because they just like it like really nice and toasty. So if you put your hand in there, like you'll even, you'll feel how warm it is. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like bath warm. water and he loves it. So and you'll know he likes it too because his head will get even bigger. <laughs> he like when he likes his environment. So I've That's seen crazy. it before when he's like stressed out and not doing well, his head will like shrink up. He like he won't look good. Huh. So I th raised the temperature and yeah, his his Back head like just kept growing. Oh, this tank is crazy. Yeah. So before you get too close, like those discus are really really shy. Yeah, they're yeah. super shy. And normally discus get trained past their like shyness because if you're walking by the tank like they'll just get used to it but because i work over there and this tank is like sort of isolated over here they're just not used to like people yeah. like all the time over here so that and those are what tetras down there yeah so those are cardinal tetras okay so i escaped this tank about a year ago with my friends and i always wanted to do one of those really cool high like high tech like planted tanks um and so when i moved back home here i just was like let's just do it um, and we got all the materials and um, it took like a whole day really but that's crazy let's see if we can get the discus to come out if you come over here uh -huh. they're in this corner here yeah I see you over there come on scoobies <laughs> come out oh they're coming but yeah discus are I mean 
one of my favorite fish. Like they're just super beautiful. And they, they come in so many different, like really vibrant colors. Like oh, yeah. you can get red ones and zebra patterns and blue, red, like these just all sorts of colors and it's they're really cool for that reason. And they're big, like they're just so such interesting looking fish. They're Yeah, they're just chill. They're like big floppy pancakes. <laughs> That's what I think of them. Yeah. But Discus are one of the most delicate freshwater fish. That's what I've heard. They're very, very delicate. Go on, go on. Yeah, so they're getting good, good bites. So they eat the um, the bloodworms, but you'll see they'll also pick up the mysis. Yeah. I've, I've found that pretty much all of my fish love mysis. If you're interested, I make videos weekly, and you can keep up with all my aquariums here and the projects that I got going on. Uh, the next time that I'll be seeing you guys is hopefully when Blake comes out to Aquashella. So we're gonna hook him up with some merch. Yeah. And uh, Blake, what's Some merch. Say? I'm like a medium. You're a Florida boy. You should. You should. You're gonna dig these hats, I think. <laughs> Which one do you want? The gray one's pretty dope. This one? Yeah. Get some air in there. Yeah, you can wear that on, out on the farm. Heck yeah. And then. It's dope. So every year, as you saw with our records, we have a new Aquashella merch design. So. This was the first year. This okay. is the second year. Dope. So, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You gotta come down to the ranch too. It's been real. Yeah, I hope to see you guys down in the ranch. As you saw earlier, my father, <laughs> Ted, he is um, he's dying for an excuse to leave the Chicago cold yeah, front and, see that. and get down to Florida. So hopefully Definitely. we'll see you, uh, see you yeah. there. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Check his channel out as well. And yeah, like next time, hopefully I'll see you at Aquashella or at the ranch. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everyone. Full.